City One. Eight hundred million people living in the ruin of the old world, in the mega structures of the new one. Only one thing fighting for order in the chaos. Judges. Dread is an amazing movie and you should all go watch it. Now, um, because people are going to ask, and they always do, I'll include one or two or ten wallpapers, um, update video on the home theater. Dread plays fantastically. A uh, few things that it, since the uh, building of the screen, because everyone, I'm sure you've all watched the 150 inch screen build. Uh, it is holding up beautifully. None of the glue has given up. It hasn't sagged. I've had to tighten uh, and adjust sort of like the tension on some of these, just, you know, give it like a squeeze and see where it's settling and then, you know, tighten it so it's got a perfect tension. Great. Um, adjust the projector because when you change screen size and material, like the material should be the same, but the old ivory was five years old and the new one is new and also bigger. So the lens is being zoomed more or less. I forget how that works. So I had to change and recalibrate that. Uh, a few other changes you may have noticed the ceiling is now black these are actually curtains you can see the holes like you see on uh, can i yank this off here these very strong magnets uh these are black velvet curtains these are the cheapest ones at amazon and uh i was trying to think about how to fix the ceiling and i have a uh, steel uh, ducting over there. So the only way to come across, either come straight across or to do this sort of like tent configuration. And they needed 16 feet. So we're a little bit under 16 feet. So I got eight foot curtains. I will link those and you can just go clip, clip, uh, some big ass magnets in there, which is actually perfect. Cause if I go to lift the screen up, I can just, there's the hook to lift the screen up from the thing. The lights are temporary. I'm holding up with a clamp. They'll eventually be, uh, the equivalent of the, what are those ones that everyone uses that change color? The bulbs that everyone uses, the Philips Hues. But I'm going to use the Casa ones because my whole house is Casa. So I'll probably put light strips on either side. I have just today raised the front speakers because now that the this, this screen is done and everything is in place, it was time to do that thing I do where you just tweak until you die. So I bought cinder blocks. If you're an audiophile, a true audiophile, if you don't have a bunch of these in various thicknesses, just lying around in your closet, you're not a real audiophile. You want to build the best table to put your turntable on? It's all about mass. Just stack up five or six or 10 of those incredibly heavy cinder blocks. Those are eight inch high, 12 inches deep and 16 inches wide. I bought four just in case I needed to go, because there's several dimensions I could use. I can go this high, which is how I've done it, or I could have put them on end like this and gone this high, or if I really needed to, I gotta put two of them in like that and gone that high and brought the speakers up. Because as everyone knows, you need the left and right speakers and the center truly, so that's gonna go up in a bit, to be about five eighths up the screen height, because that's where all the mouths are. When people talk it on screen, that's where the sounds have to come from. Well, at least for the center channel and left and right. So that's the first little thing. And another reason that these speakers were raised uh, eight inches, which is actually not eight inches because dimensional lumber and everything has to match. If you live in Europe, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But there's also a three quarter inch plywood, which I cut up and put uh, under there to sort of like just give me the, the full height and nice flat place. You don't want to put in the speaker stand on holes. And this is the next change. So curtains up here. Oh, I should probably point out the foam mats. 80 bucks for the 3 8 inch thick 25 pack of these uh, just floor mats. And black, black is black. So that when I go echo, turn off basement lights. Echo, turn off basement lights. Always ask twice. She's very polite. There is no reflection. Well, you, you with the camera can still see the floor reflecting and the light hitting the ceiling. The benefit of it being blacked out and why you do this is because when the screen 
creates light, the screen gets hit with light and it bounces off and it hits you in the eyes. That's how we see. The ceiling also sees the light. See that white? See how it's glowing? But that glows and then it creates light and bounces off and then it bounces back on the screen. So these dark areas where we don't want light would be getting it from the, the everywhere else. The walls, the floor, the ceiling. So by blacking out the entire environment around the screen, we could actually increase the contrast ratio of the screen. Because the darkest bits are no longer getting light just reflecting from somewhere else. Because it's, it's gonna be projector to screen, screen to ceiling, ceiling to screen. Floor to screen, walls to screen, everything to screen. So by doing this, by cocooning it in six feet, at least in the floor, and then the entire ceiling, which again covers these ugly, ugly, ugly ducting, which I could keep going, but it's very flammable stuff and I don't really think that was a smart idea. But we're really here, Echo, turn on basement lights, to give you an update on the rear channels, which I don't wanna mess with this home theater too much. I want it to sort of be like the permanent fixture that I constantly improve for myself. If I need to test home theater gear, if I wanna test surround receivers and processors, I would do that in another smaller home theater. For example, I could just bring it over here to the speaker testing area and I could say, there's my TV. Who gives a fuck if it's a 50 inch 1080p? Here's where I'm testing the receiver. These are the speakers I'm testing. These are the sides I'm testing. These are the rears I'm testing. Things like that. If I do want to pro test projectors, that could obviously be done over here. Set up a temporary table. Uh, any companies who are watching this, hello. If you want to send me a projector to review, I'll do that. And then people can buy it in the yard sale. Because how many projectors do I need? At least three. Rear channels had to be fixed in a way that they weren't on the floor on stands. And I, I broke a couple rules, many rules, by putting these rear speakers up. Number one, this setup is a 7.1. That is all I have access to because I'm not using a receiver. I am doing just a wild mini DSP, Dirac corrected, all digital outputting nonsense back here. There's a whole video on it. Look at my review of the mini DSP DDR. D Hold on. What the hell are you? The DD, the, the, the I, I, DDR8D? DDRC88D, I think is what it is. It's like a rhythm, it's like a rhyme. It's, it's, this is what it puts you out in time. Because I'm using a locked in permanent 7.1 only, there's no Atmos, there's no DTSX, there's no, um, Oro 3D in my future. There just can't be, not here. In the temporary one or a secondary smaller one I, to anywhere, anywhere else in the basement, I can do that. But for this one, the goal was, I want digital signals for every channel so that I can send digital signals to good DACs so that I can have every channel have its own dedicated digital to analog converters and its own amplifiers and I can have everything be separate. And I've accomplished that. And for the side channels, where I should only have four speakers, two side and two back, when you do surround sound, if you have 5.1, there'd be two rears. But when you have more than just the two, then you have four, you have back and side. And what I've done, because I'm an asshole, is I now have two sides on each side. So I have four sides and then two backs. And then I made them Swan M300s. Not the M300 Mark IIs, those are still sitting over there. Those are the, you know, one of the best speakers you can get under $1,000. But these M300s, which are the six and a half inch and single tweeter, and they're self-powered, and they have digital inputs, and I own them, because I bought them. I bought these to review, and then during the rush to get to RMAF, my, uh, DMS got a set, so they don't sound right. I think they're broken, and I panic bought a second set to send to DMS's house before he loaded the truck, before the truck went out to fucking Denver when RMAF used to still be a thing. Um, stay tuned in case I decide to host something that's like RMAF. I think I have enough contacts for that, right? So everyone would jump on that shit. Capital Audio Fest, I'll be there. Um, I think I'll be at Capital Audio Fest. We'll see. But so I ended up with two sets of M300s. Uh, one that stayed in the box, which didn't make it to RMAF, by the way, because the truck had already left. The other one that went to RMAF, 
fixed itself in root, sounded perfectly fine, and then came back and has been on my shelves ever since. And here's the thing. The next step was Swan contacted me again and sent me the M200s, the ones I just reviewed two weeks ago, a week ago. I don't know when this is coming out. And I love these speakers, the little tiny ones. It's like, oh God, no bass and treble adjustment, just digital inputs, volume control, nice remote. Really work in a room, not in a desk. So when those came into my possession, I was like, those are nice and small. There's two of them. They're not overly expensive. They're $300 for the pair. They have their own DAC, their own amp, and they're a speaker. So I wouldn't have to worry about it because with my surround sound setup, I was actually doing, I had a stack of Gashelli Labs DACs and I would no longer need that. But then what would I use for the sides? And then I remembered I had literally two pairs of M300s just sitting there doing nothing. Now that the Mark II M300s are out, I would never touch these. Probably I could sell them in the yard sale or hang them on my ceiling. So I should probably say how I'm hanging them on the ceiling because that is a very, very interesting on my Twitch live streams. I was, I was troubleshooting this or brainstorming this, I guess, by the way, best, best ladder ever metal chair. And this was the thing that we all found on Amazon. It is a monitor mount for like mounting a computer monitor to a wall. And it has articulation left and right. And then the actual plate is attached with a cup that is nylon so that you can rotate it 360 degrees or tilt it in there. So I can rotate this speaker. And if I grab this, I can tilt it back or forward like that and then adjust it and it will swing this way also if I need to, but it's just going to hang down because these speakers weigh like 35 pounds. So that is an amazing amount of articulation. I simply lag bolted into the bottom of the speaker. I measured it. I opened it up, made sure it wasn't going to hit the Tordial transformer, which by the way is five inches in each one of these. There's five inch Tordial transformer in the base of these speakers, at least this side. Now that side's the unpowered side. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I got the mounts mounted and then I mounted up to the ceiling with lag bolts, little tiny lag bolts, inch ones into those units, inch and a half up to the ceiling. Figured out where I wanted to put them. One of the most special things about the way I've been able to do my surround sound in the basement is I'm not really constrained by a room. If you set, a, set up a dedicated room for a home theater, this being 15 feet wide would probably be about as wide as you go but I've got a giant 3,000 square foot basement. And if I don't want the rear speakers to be anywhere near this person, this participant, you know, that one of the limitations, one of the things I hate when I talk about uh, home theater is when people put their rear channels like here, like right fucking here, and this person dies and that person has no idea what's going on. So the answer to that is move the speaker away, just away, as far away as you're willing to go. Now this is sort of a forward side, and I actually, through testing by having the uh, Atom, T8Vs on stands. I had tried them here and then I slowly moved them forward until I was like, you know what? If I put a side speaker here, every single head has direct line of sight to the speaker and it blends beautifully for when things are traveling off the screen to the left channel, which always has to be off of a screen. I refuse to put a center, a um, left and right of a home theater behind a screen because if you really watch a movie and really listen, when things move to those side channels, it's usually when they move off the screen. I could probably even stand to move those further out if I felt like it. But when things move center, left, to the rear, when they transition, if you make this gap, this angle, which we get to the middle, if you make this angle too great, it disappears because it can't quite nominally fake that. So by having it go from there just to there, instead of from there all the way to there, sort of help. Now, why do you have two side channels, Eos? Because I can, that's number one. Number two, because I have such a large space I'm trying to cover, and they're getting the exact same signal. I'm actually splitting the coaxial digital output of the DDRC88D. That's it, I got it. You just had to... I'm splitting it in a way that is almost I feel guilty in the way I'm doing this because what I have here are coaxial to toslink and toslink to coaxial converters where you feed it a signal. I'm feeding it this signal from that DDRC-88D 
it is being told this is the input of a coaxial digital, and then you have the option to output both fiber optic and coaxial digital. And what I did is I've output coaxial digital to one of these speakers and fiber optic to another converter, which is then outputting to coaxial digital, which is outputting to the other coaxial digital. And that could be replaced with a um, mini DSP Nano Digi if I really wanted to get creative. And because this is only getting one channel, this is getting right side and they're playing exactly the same time exactly the same thing if i wanted to be you know an artist and i wanted to create delays between the two of them or have that one go first and this one go second or anything like that or change up how they do it i couldn't do room correction in that way because the drx is only going to recognize this as one channel but i want to do that i can get a different method of splitting that but we're, we're not interested echo turn off basement six there we go. Um, one of the other things, all right, wait, before I get to that. So the wire that connects usually the swans from left to right is, do I have one hanging out here? I have one, but I probably put it away. It's a four pin, I could pull this one out if I'm real careful. Here, it's one of these, usually has a screw terminal, it's gold, you've seen them, and it's four wires and it's connected to tweeter and woofer from the amplification unit in this. So the DAC is in here and then it says, I'm the right channel and it says, I'm the left channel and that's what it does. So to feed the other side, I needed to go and find these exact connectors and then run my own cables across the ceiling to go from here to there, which was quite a long run. And you can see I've made it rather neat, actually. Um, coaxial digital is here. I just changed to these 15 foot white power cables, which are going with it because you really can't fuck up uh, coaxial digital by having a run in parallel with 110. So that's going there. So they're all controlled all at once. And then here are the 14 gauge four conductor speaker wires. I have to clip these off, but they go here, here, here straight. I actually use a network cable to feed it along the ceiling. You can see them sort of hanging out here. I could tuck that back under. Yeah, they run, they go from the, I pulled them both over and then spread them out and then they go above the paper in here and they all got custom soldered. I did that on live stream. So I soldered all the connections together, plugged them in. So now those speakers getting the signal they're the volume adjustment, which we have to talk about also. And it's getting fed over here to this speaker and that speaker and everything's happy. The rears, same thing, or the, yeah, backs, same thing, I should say. Uh, this actually has the original stock cable from one of those 300s because it was way short. So it goes screwed in across the ceiling to that. That's the slave unit. This is the master unit. It has got coaxial digital and a plug and it comes over here along the pipes and it all gets plugged in. That's a good one. It all gets plugged in to a three-way uh, switch I've got here, which is hooked up to currently actually my kilowatt because I wanted to know how much power these are all drawing. When they're on and idle, all three Swan powered speakers draw 117 watts. That's not a little, but not so much that it's killing my whole soul. So let's unplug this actually, because I'm done with the kilowatt. You could see the CASA switch there, which controls power because at night, when I'm done with this home theater, I have uh, CASA switches that turn off everything. Um, behind the screen is one CASA switch on a power strip. And into that power strip is the left crown, the right crown, and the other Swan uh, M500s that I have back there. And when they get turned off at night, it's that's it. There's no power draw. Because these, I don't believe, will go into any sort of sleep mode, which my electric bill was $425 over the summer. And I that's probably a lot of air conditioning. But at the same time, I'm just trying to like cut back on just leaving everything on all the time. It, it's bad voodoo. It's just bad voodoo. So when I am done with watching movies and actually the casa stuff is great because you could assign a bunch of different items to do like if i wanted to say i want to watch a movie now and then it would be okay shut off all the lights in the basement turn off turn on all the amplifiers i could actually probably set up 
I can actually probably set up a trigger for the projector also. There's a trigger out. I don't think there's a trigger in, that's unfortunate. Oh, that sucks. If there was a trigger in, then you could run a 12 volt transformer on a CASA switch and when it goes click on, this would turn on and just turn on the projector, but I don't think it does that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Asuka. We're a very good art rendering of Asuka. So that covers the rear channels. Basically, they're all using the same monitor mounts. I basically place them by sitting in the middle and just going, okay, where do I want sound to come from? Beep, beep, beep. Because I had originally, when you were watching me build the screen, I had the set of JBLs clamped here, literally wood, wood clamps to this metal beam. And that was a little bit unrealistic to keep forever and ever and ever because it's where my head is. I can actually walk completely under this and I'm six feet tall. So that's, that's a benefit. No one's gonna bang their head unless they're gonna, they're you know, six foot four, then they have to worry. So in order to get them out of what I thought was like perfect position, because this was like a perfect back speaker position, I had to move it way the hell over here, which at some point I had gone from here to there just to sort of spread it out more. And once these were here, and they, they look close together, but I can't spread that one any farther because I can't spread that one any farther. Once I had these in position, having the side speaker all the way up there meant that was the gap in angle. And I'm like, I can't live with it too far apart, so let's add another speaker. And it's worked out fucking full, I was gonna say flawlessly, then I was gonna say phenomenally. Oh, here's that wire. This is the normal one. The one for the uh, the Mark II has six conductor because it has uh, way more drivers. This would be a waste of putting up there. Now, my usual um, statement is don't spend a lot on rear channels. Don't spend a lot of red channels. Just put them up. They just have to make sound. They're sound effects channels. And that stands true. Th these speakers, if you really calculate out the cost, if I bought those for 300 and I actually did buy these, they were like $520 each pair. So 520, that's, that's 1,040. That's 1,340 for everything, for six speakers with their own DACs. That's another thing. They have to have a DAC, their own amps, and they look fucking, and they're fucking swans. So that's it, you're done. You, you got, you, you done got swaned, bro. So now I have a center channel, that's a Swan M500. In case you didn't see that during the, uh, the screen build, I have a Swan M500 behind the screen. I, I'll have to lift it up. Echo, turn on basement six. I haven't lifted it up in a bit. I haven't had a need to, but. We go up from the middle. You have to sort of like, oh, I have included, I finished these uh, spring and I've just tied it a zip tie around it. So look, I pull that up, and this little hook thing just comes out. When I'm not using it, it retracts and it's not super hard. So it's not gonna do anything weird. I've removed all the little metal pincers from all these clips so I don't get in the way. Same system here. It's just a piece of rope, a zip tie, and a screw through the plastic. And it just does that. And so when I'm not using it, it pulls up through the, where the hell is this one? Uh, there it is. That, that, that's, give me scientific, mechanical engineering journal. In fact, here are all the plastic, here are all the metal clips from all those, in case I need to take one off, I can just put one back. So now that I have jacked up the heresies on the cinder blocks, I'm probably gonna have to raise that table, which by the way, audiophile plastic table, this is one of those ones that doesn't have any rattling parts. I know there's plastic tables that rattle. Um, back here is my center channel. For those of you who are wondering what my center channel is, it is a pair of swans. The biggest swans. The ones that I'm like, no one can fucking use these, they're too intense. Guess where that is perfect? That's like saying, I got this crackhead who just keeps punching things. I don't know what to do with him. You put him in the WWE. Wait, is that a golf thing now? Whatever, you put him in there, he wins, he's a champion, it's great. These are the crackhead that won't stop punching things. Center channel of my home theater. Because even at 17 feet away, you die. I have these, uh, oh, one of the little caveats of using self-powered speakers. 
and not like uh, self-powered uh, powered monitors, is when you shut off the power to them, which is what happens when I go echo, turn off basement theater, everything is now off. Those amps turn off, these swans turn off, all of those swans have turned off, or at least these three powered versions have turned off. When I turn everything off, and then echo turn on basement theater, those have actual analog volume knobs. You turn them and that's it. These are digital volume knobs. Which means, because they're actually well-made speakers, when you turn the volume up to maximum, and then you turn the speaker off and turn it back on, it doesn't remember that it's on maximum, for good reason. Because it'll blow up and kill you the next time it plays anything. So it simply goes to a default level. So I have had to sort of work around using self-powered uh, speakers. These are fucking huge, by the way. Um, I've learned how to work around that by letting all of them shut off, letting all of them turn on, and wherever their volume is, that's it. You can't get the remote out and hit louder or quieter because you're not gonna do that every time you turn on your surround sound. So I've actually had to bump these up, I think one decibel from their turn on position to match what I've got going on to these when they're at zero dB in my whole setup. And then the rear speakers are up all eight decibels just to get it to balance without having to adjust the volume. Real quick with the fucks on this table, in case you weren't paying attention at the end of that live stream, uh, amplifier here, which is a crown that powers the two infinity subs. These are not 0.1 subs. These subs are specifically to support low end in each one of the heresies. The heresies are a uh, four-way speaker because they have um, this tweeter, this horn, that driver, and that sub all acting as one speaker. The reason those are so close together and tilted is because in the basement, you just gotta put things where they work. And when I was using them in my apartment, they were never further than that far apart because you used to have the fireplace in the middle. When I tried to spread them out, it actually, they lost all their benefit. And by pushing them together and angling like them like that, because these have front firing 10 and then two side firing 10s, there's six drivers dancing around, you just gotta play with them until they sound good. So when this speaker is told to make sound, it does in line with that. And I can adjust the time alignment of that because it is further back from this, you could see it, um, using the mini DSP Nano Digi that is controlling the entire front. So these, both these heresies and these subs are all one coaxial digital signal that just goes, that's it, here's left, here's right, and then I deal with everything else separately. I'm not even done with this video yet. I thought this was gonna be a quick one. So much for that shit. Here is the CASA switch that turns on and off the amps and the speaker. Um, a couple DACs back here. I'm still using the Gashelli Labs DAC for the subs. So that's actually being broken out and that's got, those have uh, JDS Labs Element 2 DACs. So left and right channels are going into the stereo 2502 crown amps and then each one is getting top and bottom by amps so that I control the horns and the 12 inch separately. I've actually had to turn up. If you remember my review of the heresies, I said I had to quell the horns because they were too bright. But now we are insanely far away. So I've actually bring them up like two more decibels. So they're only down three decibels instead of five. Uh, those center channel swans are angled uh, quite severely. Uh, for the simple reason that if they're pointed straight, comb filtering is a thing because since you have two sources of the same signal, just like I do on the side, you're going to have cancellation. But also, since we are so far away, and I'm going to back up, I'm going to keep backing up until I hit the seat. I'm just going to keep backing up. Okay, now I've hit the seat, now I'm sitting down. I'm so far from that setup that it just sounds like one perfect thing. And when you have them towed in like that, that means that the person sitting in this chair, of course it's the chair that has like nine wires going across it. The person sitting in this chair is basically getting a little bit of that left one and way more of that one, because that one's pointing right at me. And the person sitting in the other chair is getting the opposite. They're getting way more of that one and a little bit of that one. So it's always sort of biasing it towards the center of the screen, which is what you want. 
A center channel could be one speaker or it can be two speakers as long as you don't go too crazy with how far apart they are and you do this as sort of adjustment. Now I'm going to raise this up so it sort of competes with the tweeter height here. We have to bring that, yep, if I bring that up one notch, which I'm not going to do on camera, I have to get down on my hands and knees basically. Wow, it's going to suck. If I'm alone, it's going to suck because I've got to get down on my knees squeeze the two things and lift and hopefully that doesn't fall off the table it's great actually wait that fan's running i don't think i've ever seen the fan running in a crown amplifier before huh you okay baby she was just playing dread but i mean that's that's interesting something to take note of so yeah, that's basically how the theater is so far. The final step that you're not gonna be able to see because I'm gonna sure shut this off and not do it on camera. Um, the seats, there's a problem with them. There's only four of them. And the problem is not getting more seats. The problem is putting more seats somewhere. So these are on the ground. And if you go to most movie theaters, they tend to not be big flat planes unless you have the screen up in the fucking sky. So, I have decided to make these taller. And by doing that, I've bought a fuckload of lumber. Because you could actually afford it now. You could afford to buy lumber. And I'm going to build, actually, this is the size of it. I bought the cheap ply with those. Still $35 a sheet for the cheap shit. $70 a sheet for the good stuff. So I bought some three-quarter inch ply, and this is exactly the right size. These are five and a half feet long and four feet wide. Because those four seats are 11 feet wide and if I go four feet deep that puts me about here I'm going to build a box I'm actually going to build two boxes with wheels underneath them that the chairs can I'm going to push the boxes together carpet those boxes put these seats up and on top of them and gain eight or nine inches of height which will put my head around here which is perfect, because there's my left and right. Centers will be up, um, sides will still be perfect. You see where I am, see where I'm just hanging out. And by putting myself here, that means that when I have more than four people, which is the whole point of this, four people is fine. Two people that know each other real well in the love seat, two guests. But what do you have three guests? Or what if I bring four people I know over and then I'm alone? Well, this couch was my couch for my old thing. It's on wheels. Um, I might take it off the wheels and put it on sliders or adjust the wheels. But I tried pushing this in front of my four seats, and all you see is head. All you see is head. You get head and fuck, you lose the bottom of the screen, it's no good. So this has to go up at least nine inches, and then I can roll that couch in front for when I have more guests. That'll fit three more people. If I can't get it done with seven people down here, then I have too many fucking guests. So that's my next big project is using all the power tools and things. Let me show you my saw just so I could link an affiliate link in the description of my saw. It, it was 500 fucking dollars for the kit. I need to fucking link the saw. Behold. A Milwaukee M18 fuel fucking brushless murder saw with the centralized battery location. Actually, I can't, I can only link the tool. I can't link the kit I bought. Uh, this thing is beast mode. Yeah, but I got to take it to Home Depot or Lowe's and literally cut all the wood up in the parking lot because I was like, fuck it. Still hasn't used any battery. The battery's like, I don't give a shit. I just, I, I ripped, these got ripped at the store, but all the two by eights and, oh, two by sixes. So two by eights for the actual outside dimensions, two by sixes for all the supports that are going to go underneath it. And then I bought wheels a couple weeks ago which i probably unboxed on the unboxing channel so you guys make sure you link the unboxing channel um i got these sorts of get off of there heavy duty cool yeah cool yeah wheels so these are not going to be on the bottom of the box because that would make the box like 12 inches tall i'm going to recess these into the box so that the bottom like inch sticks out so that i can just move that whole conglomerate of fucking chairs around and then I bought these months and months and months ago to try to use on my doors upstairs. And they're just foot presses. You push them down, they hold the floor with a rubber stop, and if you want to release them, they do that. And these don't work on my doors upstairs, but they should work if I buy two more of them at least. 
to move the chairs where I need them to go and then just press, press, nothing moves, everyone climbs in, everyone enjoys their movie and they go home. Um, but yeah, so my next project is to build giant fucking platforms that roll around that are that size to put these thousand pound chairs on. Which by the way, these are each 250 pounds, so that's a thousand pounds of chairs, but should be easy peasy. Um, but that's basically it. I'm gonna try to raise it up. I'm not gonna lower the screen again. If you want to see what anime backgrounds you're gonna have to suffer on this tiny little BenQ, like 27 inch. But I think you get the idea. So yeah, that's the current state of the home theater. Ceiling is basically done. Everyone's like, why don't you finish your basement? Zeos, finish your basement. No, because if I finished my basement, I couldn't put the home theater as wide as I did. It's literally fucking jutting out. It's this is definitely function over form. That's why I love this basement. If it was form and then function, you, you compromise things. This is an uncompromised fucking listening experience. It's murderous. I just watched Dread. I didn't even have this projector on. I just listened to Dread. And it was like, oh God. Here, let's, let's, I'm just, I know it's gonna be bad for everything, but it's like if I put on E.T. the Extraterrestrial, that's a definite. John Wick chapter three, Parabellium. <laughs> I can't tell you how much that's the swans. In fact, no wait, that's a lie. I can absolutely tell you how much that's the swans in front because I go here and I just mute those and no, I'm sorry, I mute that one and now it'll just be the swan. I'm gonna pause it so I don't get some sort of weird movie copyright. And, uh, fuck you, fuck you. These speakers are too fucking loud. That's their default on volume. Do you understand that? I didn't raise the, I don't even know how many clicks up it is, but whatever it is, if you turn it off and turn it back on, that's their volume. That is all of Honestly, if I wanted to get rid of the heresies, I just get another pair of those and put them farther left and right and be done with it. They're so fucking loud. They are perfect for what I do. Because they can do John Wick Parabellum, and then they can do, you know, singing and dancing. What, do I have a singing and dancing song? Like, what's the good, Joker's got a good, s why am I filming this for, I'm sorry, if you haven't made it through. Oh shit, there you go. I know I'm gonna hit a ballad like right here. <laughs> This is a, a little shop of horrors, by the way. I dream we'll go. It's just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful fucking thing. Especially when it's coming through the DAX I trust, which in the swans I trust their own DAX. In fact, I've specified that you should use the DAX built into the speakers so that you don't have to put them through the digital to analog conversion again because they're all DSP corrected. And then I'm gonna DSP correct the whole fucking setup, which hasn't been done yet. I have not Dirac corrected this setup in its current form because I'm trying to fix things where they're gonna be so I don't have to do it twice, because it's gonna be a three hour ordeal. I'm gonna use a 17 point measurement to cover the entire width of this at the new height. So once this is up the nine and a half inches, I'll get the microphone out and I will do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, seven, it's like 17 or 19, I forgot how many points, I think it's 17 points. Um, but at least the rears are in a fixed position. They're not moving anywhere. I'll make sure they're angled properly. I'm never gonna touch the, the volume on them. So when I do the direct correction, that'll get one channel, that'll get a channel, that'll get a channel, that'll get another one channel. It's probably gonna be a little weirded out by the fact that there's two of them but that should be fine. And then we have that whole fucking conglomeration up front and yeah, we're good to go. So thank you for stopping by. 
you ever want to hear the most amazing fucking surround sound I've ever, and by the way, the point one sub, I, I, I ignored it because nothing's changed on it, but it lives here because this is where it sounded the best. Isn't that right? Still using the Rhythmic via v FVX15, which I have to email them because there was a bigger one they wanted to send me. I was waiting for it to happen in white. That was a couple months ago. So they should be ready. I have this currently strapped to these Ikea tables so I could roll them around because they're at the perfect height here good um yeah so that thing is beast actually there's a DAC for that because that's one of those things that i have a digital signal well the center channel the way it works with the ddrc 88 d is there's one coax digital cable coming all the way over here going into where is it this mini dsp nano digi where it then gets sent one as a center channel so it takes the, the one channel and it says, you're now two channels, do these. And the other one comes out and goes back here to another Gishela Labs DAC, uh, Enog, that is uh, XLR balanced cable just over to the, to the thing and it's done. So yeah, thank you for stopping by and getting this update. Suddenly Seymour. Now I wanna watch a little shop of fucking horrors, fuck. All right, I'm gonna raise that table up a notch and try not to drop anything on the floor. It's gonna suck. Thank you for stopping by. I'll link a couple wallpapers. These 21 by nine ones are just wallpapers that I have. Where's my Windows key? These are all wallpapers that I've simply cropped from 16 by nine wallpapers. So it's just whatever I feel like linking in the description I will. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. What does your home theater do that's fucking weird? Because mine's a fucking disaster. Mine is just a, a epitome of confusing and impossible. I'm pretty sure if you wanted to torture someone, you'd, you'd arrest them, put them in the basement, and say, you have to explain how this theater works in a month, or we shoot you. And then they die. So, yes, wallpapers, swans. I have almost a pure swan surround sound. All I need now is my front left and rights and the sub to be swan and then we're swanned up, bro. So yeah, Patreon and Subscribestar help support me in this hobby at least. A lot of this stuff comes from companies or I just fuck it by thanks to Patreon and Subscribestar. Um, you're paying my mortgage, which by the way, why the fuck am I gonna be paying like $1.1 million of my mortgage for the next 30 years? I didn't pay that much for this house. How do mortgages even work? Um, but yeah, thank you for supporting the channel. You get to see these are videos early, re videos early. My brain is a slightly broken today. See videos early, participate in yard sales, and sound demos. Two hundred sound demos got martyred and sent away to the to the to the afterlife. So all those dead sound demos. If you want to get them back, there is a private. Hold on, I can actually show you. If I go to the Oasis chat, Hold on. Oasis. Zeos Sound Demo Oasis. There you go. So here you go. Here are all the sound demos that I've ever recorded. And any of the newer ones at the bottom are all actually the flax from the recordings. Whereas all these old ones, the Swan DIY 3.1s, D1090s, Stacks, these are all in flack, but ripped off the videos in whatever format they were encoded to probably mp3 320 and then just preserved in flack so there's no extra compression but you won't get any youtube compression this is all free of youtube compression at least and the newest ones are actually flack so if you want to listen to actual flack sound demos uh five dollar tier lets you access that um ten dollars puts you in the behind the scenes private telegram chat where those people know exactly what i'm doing all the time and if they're like hey zios how did you do this and i'm like here's how i do this also, the, the moving mats are back there against the wall. I could do two more, but honestly, I don't think there's too much reflection happening off those little cubby holes, since 90% of it's coming out of the center channel, and those are just surrounded by curtains anyway. But yeah, no, welcome to my home theater. It is a, it's a labor of love, and it's as exactly as confusing as I, I want simplicity by not having a receiver. And that causes so much confusion and complication. That I just, I love it. It's my favorite thing. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for stopping by. 
I'll see you in two days for a normal video, and if you're looking for the review series, that'll be up on the Sound Demo channel, which is also linked down below, uh, where all the Sound Demos got uploaded. So when I upload all the Sound Demos, I go there, and uh, apparently I'm gonna be sticking the reviews there too, because those always got low views. And if, you're, if you wanna know what I did in the past, and I will re-review things, that's where it'd be. Good, good, thank you. Time to climb under that like a dog. I'll see you, baby. Let me ask you something. Real quick. Does this thing scare you? Look where the yes. mouths are. Would you like if I took this thing and made straight for your goddamn incisors? No. It hurt, right? Mm -hmm. You'd scream, right? Mm -hmm. Well, get your ass out of here. Perfect. Hey, don't I know you? Yeah, Seymour Krillbone did that yesterday. Oh, your mouth's a mess, kid. Oh, is it? Wisdom, we'll just rip that little bugger right out of there. What do you say? No, I can't.